So, this video is for Daniel, my friend, my new friend. <laughs> uh, that's all in uh, loving jest. Um, <laughs> so, I wanted to respond in video to your proof that you brought. I don't know why Philly is not bringing the proof, but that's okay. Um, I want to, uh, I want to bring up something you said. You said, um, sorry, let me bring it up. You, you bring up a source that is a wiki source and that just like to any serious scholar is laughable i mean even to like you can't use wiki sources in college courses you can't that's not proof like i said you can edit those <laughs> like i could go onto that site and click the edit button and put um you all worship monkeys and come on. So anyway, you responded back to me when I said, you know, that's not a scholarly source. And you said, um, you know very well that most pagan rituals were passed down word to mouth because there was no written languages. Um, so yes, I trust the sources I use for relevant information as I know how depraved ancient cultures were with their sacrifices. So you trust the source that you quoted. Okay. Um, okay. First of all, there were written languages. Um, have you ever read the code of, how do you say it? Hammurabi? I can't remember how to pronounce it. I have. I've read it. I've read it a few times. Okay. The Book of the Dead. Um, there's a lot of ancient sources, a lot of um, archaeology coming from Babylon. Yes, they had writing. We know some things about Babylon because they had writing. Okay, that's just a side issue. Okay, but you said you trust this source. The source that you quoted um was so oh, do i still have it hold on a second i'm trying here okay i bring up the the wiki books <laughs> the wiki books that you uh gave to me as proof um you your proof is alexander hislop which ironically, Jehovah Witnesses love to use his slot. As a matter of fact, you probably didn't know that when his slot came out with some of his writings, they're promoted by Jehovah Witnesses, but you know, that's a side issue. However, since I'm a scholar and um, since I'm a scholar, if someone quotes ever quotes a source i'm gonna go find a pdf to the source that's just that's just how i'm thinking and it's because and no i'm not comparing you to muslims however that has been the experience with them i'm with many people that i debate but specifically muslims who say well yeah this person wrote this or it says this in in the uh Catholic Encyclopedia, they do that all the time. And um, so I'm like, okay, and because I never take quotes at any face value. Any website on on the internet, if it quotes a source, I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're a source that agrees with me. I'm going to go find the original document, which is what everyone should be doing because there's so much foolishness on the internet you can't trust any of it you got to go to the documents okay 
So I did. All right, and the interesting thing is that I read the entire, I've got it pulled up right now, The Two Babylons, Alexander Hislop. I have chapter three, section two, pulled up, which talks entirely about Easter. That's what the whole chapter is about, and I read the whole entire chapter. And you know what? I don't find anything about red eggs or blood or babies. I don't find it. It's not there. So if you think that's the source that is where that's from, I don't see it. Maybe you could um, explain to me where it is. Um, however, what I did find, um, let me see if I can find it again. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay, it talks about how the ancient Druids bore an egg as a sacred emblem, emblem excuse me, of their order. And the mysteries of Bacchus is celebrated in Athens. One part of the no nocturnal ceremony consisted in the consecration of the egg. The Hindu fables celebrate their mundane egg as of a golden color. The people of Japan make their sacred egg to have been brazen. In China, at this hour, dyed or painted eggs are used on sacred festivals, even as in this country. In ancient times, eggs were used in religious rites of the Egyptians and the Greeks and were hung up for mystic purposes in their temples. From Egypt, these sacred eggs can be distinctly traced to the banks of the Euphrates. The classic poets are full of fables of the mystic eggs of the Babylonians, and thus its tale is told by Hygnus and the Egyptian, the learned keeper of the Palatine library at Rome in the time of Augustus, who was skilled in all the wisdom of his native country, an egg of wondrous size is said to have fallen from heaven into the river Euphrates. The fishes ro rolled it to the bank where the doves have settled upon it and hatched it. Out came Venus, who afterwards was called the Syrian goddess. That is Astarte, or however you say that. Hence the egg became one of the symbols. Um, Easter, accordingly in Cyprus, one of the chosen seats of the worship of Venus, the egg of wondrous size was represented on a grand scale. And then it goes on to talk about how the ark was symbolized as an egg. It goes on and on and on, but red color, blood from babies, it's not there. So maybe you could provide an actual source that it's in. However, I would like to discuss that egg for just a minute, okay? Bear with me. Let's see here. So what I wanna what I wanna know, and um granted this is not in the Bible, however, Torah observers are observing their um their Passover cedar plate. And I I'm sure you instantly know where I'm going with this, which has an egg on it. And um, I'm on Shabbat.org right now that explains why the egg is used. And there, I'll read some things. Um, uh, let me see. Eggs in mourning. Uh, others explain that an egg, a traditional food of mourning, since its rounded shape symbolizes the cycle of life, expresses our mourning for the destruction of the Holy Temple and the lack of these sacrifices. That's one reason it was... Um, used um let me go down to eating the egg at the cedar the following reasons are although similar to the above reasons for the egg placement were specifically given by various commentaries regarding the eating of the egg so um more mourning let me see here uh rabbi moshe a Searles Rima explains that the custom of eating the egg at the cedar is an outgrowth of having an egg on the cedar plate, and it is eaten as a way of mourning the destruction of the temple and the lack of the Corbin uh, Passover. Others explain that while the egg is placed on the cedar plate in commemoration of the Corbin Jakada, or however you say that, it is eaten as a sign of mourning. 
and he points out that the Knight of the Cedar has a unique connection to the destruction of the temple as the very first Passover always falls out on the same day of the week. Uh, let me see here. According to others, there's a tradition that Abraham passed away on the night of the Passover and the egg is eaten to mourn his passing. Egg with an eye to the future. This is Jewish practice that we're talking about. While many of the explanations about the egg have to do with mourning our past, the egg also symbolizes our hope and prayer for the future. When a chicken lays an egg, the egg appears to be a completed object. Yet in truth, it isn't complete, and the egg is just a preparation for the live creature that will emerge from it later. So too the exodus from Egypt will at first appearing to be in an, an end in itself, and truth is only a preparation for the final redemption. Um, the coming of the Messiah may it be speedily in our days. You know, I know there are many Torah Torah women that are observing the cedar plate. And what I would ask you is, now I quoted your your dude that you say you trust. And I'm not saying everything that I read of his is accurate. I haven't looked into all of it yet. I've looked into some of it, and some of it's just a copycat of a writer um, very briefly before him. And it's not like a lot of his things are not even like they're not written or observed in history, you know. Anyone can take a pen and say, this happened. But there's got to be, there's got to be some proof. But apparently you don't care for proof, so whatever. But um, I would like to know if everything that he's written about the egg, and there was a lot more detail, I read all of it, and there was nothing about red eggs or blood or sacrificing children and painting the eggs of blood. It's just ab absent from there. If you can find it, I would be happy to read it. I still I still wouldn't accept it as a, a historical source because it's not historical. Um, the concept of historical to any historian in any time ever has been that it needs to be, uh, in order for something to be historical, it needs to be a witness um, or a like those primary and secondary witnesses but basically once you get thousands of years later it's not a historical witness therefore historians across the board are going to throw that out because it's not it's it's not proof of anything it's a claim I know, that drives me nuts. But anyway, if what he was saying was true and you trust the source, I would love to know why the Torah observers, a good portion of them, are going to use a cedar plate. And if people are copying dying the eggs and using eggs and doing egg hunts and eggs are bad, and this write-up that you trust is not just talking about dying the eggs that's pagan. It's talking about using eggs for really much of anything as far as remembrance is bad and evil. Okay? Not just the colored ones. So if it was copied from way back thousands of years ago, then why are Jews using it as representative of their practices? And because I don't believe you're going to find that that's biblical. Um, you can certainly point out a passage if you would like. Um, but yeah, I would I would question why the egg is so such a big deal on the cedar plate. And are you observing the cedar plate? And if you are, isn't that a little bit hypocritical? <laughs> Um, but yeah, a long story short, that dyeing the eggs is not in there. Dyeing them red, there's no, it's just not there. So why don't you try another source that is more contemporary to the events, that's believable, and that shows specifically, and maybe I missed it, 
I, I mean, there's larger texts. I was reading the chapter on Easter specifically. Maybe it's mentioned somewhere else. And, you know, if I find it, I'll, because I believe in, you know, if I have an error, I want to correct it. And I believe in being honest with any text I'm reading. So if I find it, I'll come back and say, yeah, it is there. And I will admit to it. No problem whatsoever. I still don't accept it as a historical source. I mean, come on. 1800s. Oh, by the way, there was something else too. I noticed in the source that, uh, that this uh, chapter that I'm reading that he wrote, I see a very, very, a, a grave error. Let me see if I can find it again. Yeah, I found it. A grave error on a timeline. He said, the words of Socrates, writing on this very subject about AD 450, are these. Those who inhabit the princely city of Rome fast together before Easter three weeks, excepting the Saturday and Lord's Day. Okay, that's in quotes. But it says AD 450. Um, and Socrates was a pre-first century. He was in the BC era. So I don't know where he's getting that from. Um, I'm going to go make sure this isn't a typo in the uh, PDF document of um, the two Babylons, Alexander Hislop, that I'm reading. Um, but it is a PDF of the, of the whole thing. I'm just in the particular chapter about Easter. Um, long story short, as I said before, I'm rambling again. Sorry. Um, it's not there. So maybe it could provide something else. Maybe Philia can provide an actual historical source. You know, if the pagans did that, that's horrible. <laughs> I'm not, like, brushing aside. I just, I like to see proof there's so much. You wouldn't believe it if you just... If you just open original sources and start reading, you wouldn't believe the amount of false information that is on the internet. It makes me angry. And I would, I've said the same thing to many people. Like, don't promote something. First of all, don't promote something that is historically inaccurate. And the other thing is, is don't ever, it's a bad idea to to quote a source to validate your side, well, that same source is going to invalidate your side. It just, it's not smart. I say that in all love. Um, but anyway, yeah. Can you bring me another source? Because that one's not working. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, my friend Daniel. Hope to talk to you soon. All right. Love you in him. Bye-bye.